have put hours into this website and you finally accomplish, you finally got the certificates from FreeCodeCamp. I hate to tell you this, but FreeCodeCamp certificates are not as important as you might think. In fact, I've never heard any hiring managers would prefer FreeCodeCam certificates over real world experiences and projects. Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Vicky May and I am a software developer in New York City. In this channel, you'll learn a lot about learning how to code and also as well as my experiences that I share on this channel that I'm living in this tech world. So if you're interested in the things that I talked about, maybe consider subscribing. Now, I know that you have clicked on this video because you already know what FreeCodeCamp is. If you don't, FreeCodeCamp is a nonprofit organization that provides free resources, including this website, to help people to learn how to program for free and also as well as helping other people who can improve their programming skills. Isn't that sound wonderful? Yeah, it sure does. In this video, I want to talk about what do you need to do after you got that FreeCodeCamp certificate. Like after tutorials and interactive coding sessions that you've accomplished, what do you need to prep for the next step, especially in this nasty job economy for software developers. Just wanted you to know this is a step-by-step -step guide and I've put these steps in a very particular order so then you can actually follow through. Step number one is to build a portfolio. As soon as you finished all these learning, you're probably really tired of building another thing. But I wanted to point out that this Building your portfolio isn't just any projects that you build to learn how to program. Building your portfolio, you need to pick projects that are very strategic. And this is how you do it. There's gonna be a lot of projects that you can pick from. I don't want you to pick from any projects that are already in any Udemy courses or any FreeCodeCam websites. I want you to pick a project that is actually going to make you stand out. And here is how. First of all, you need to do a lot of research on what kind of projects that you should build. And a lot of it comes down to looking for what is more high demand in the market. The way you could do it is going through developers blog posts and interesting things and technologies that developers are talking about. Also, you wanted to look into the job market. Look into the job market where those skills are required. For instance, if you wanted to become a AI software developer, you need to look into those particular rules and you need to look into the job descriptions and see what kind of skill sets that they're looking for, especially when it comes to programming languages and also when it comes to frameworks and libraries that they want you to know or have experience with. After you do all of these intensive research, now you have an idea of what kind of projects that you should build to leverage those skills into the project or implement those skills into the project. That's how you should go about thinking about what projects that you should build. And once you build it, obviously you want to put all these projects together to build up your portfolio. Step number two is to build your online presence. As you are building up your portfolio, you need to also take into the time to build your online presence. When I'm saying building your portfolio, I don't mean that you should start a YouTube channel. Maybe you should, I don't know, but that's not what I meant. What I meant is you need to start building your online presence as a developer. That means as small as creating your own LinkedIn profile, as small as creating your developer GitHub page. Things that are small, but also convey the information about what you're passionate about in tech. People are going to learn more about you as a developer by looking at those online presence. Now, you want it to be comfortable and honoring being who you are. So if you're not comfortable talking in front of the camera, don't do that. 
do something that makes you comfortable and enjoyable. For instance, if you are enjoying talking about developer stuff or enjoying talking about newer technologies or enjoy writing about it, do a blog post, start a podcast, or do something just as small as just one or two blog posts on LinkedIn. Speaking of online presence, there are these following things I want you to think about as you are building up that presence. Number one is your resume and contact information. You want to be able to showcase not only your projects, but also your work experiences. So then it will allow you to attract more recruiters and employers. Number two is your relevant social media profile. What I mean by that is minimum, you want it to start a LinkedIn profile with yourself in it, as well as maybe threads or Twitter. I refuse to call it X. Number three is you want to think about responsive design. And the reason for that is because now everyone is using the mobile phone to look into websites and look into your online presence. It's really important to keep in mind to think about the user experience, especially the user who are going onto your website or your web app through mobile devices. Step number three is to prepare to lay low to build the real world experiences. The economy isn't doing well, especially for software developer. So you need to just be patient about gathering all these experiences that you could possibly find. One of the most important thing is building up your technical skills as well as your soft skills. Now, here's a bunch of ways that you can do it. The number one way is to be open up to apprenticeships and internships. I know there aren't that many internships and apprenticeships now available, but it still might be a good chance for you to build up that real world experiences without having any at all. The second thing is leverage your network to be able to start your freelancing gig or find even small and local businesses where you can improve and provide values for them as a developer. A lot of times, even just like small gigs here and there, it will help you to build up your technical skills. It'll help you to give you that real world experience, especially giving business a value. Number three is open source contribution. This is something that I highly recommend because it's easier to look for open source contributions online. There's so many of them. One of the easiest way is to go on to GitHub and look for those open source contribution opportunities. And the reasons for that is because open source projects are usually pretty big. And a lot of times you can read through different code bases and also different people who write the code and learn from them or even just learn what to not to do. If you are interested in building your experiences with open source, I would highly recommend you to check out my friend Eddie's YouTube channel. He has dedicated so much time into helping people to contribute to open source and he has so many information and resources on his channel. So I would highly recommend you to check him out. Step number four is prepare to dive into this world of infinite interview loops. Unfortunately, interview process is so long and so draining. It is not a sprint, it is a marathon. And I wanted to make that a fact. You need to be more patient and you need to learn to get better at interviews, not only technically, but also just all different aspects of interviews in general. If you are not passing technical interviews, you're not getting a job offer, period. So it is extremely important to practice as early as you could and prepping for that technical interview. I know that FreeCodeCam has a session that helps you to prep for interviews and I would highly recommend that. And I left the information's down in the description down below. So make sure to check out that sections of interview preps on FreeCodeCam. And I would also say start applying for jobs as early as you could. I know a lot of times you might get intimidated by all of these lists of things that they want this developer to possess. But a lot of 
those job descriptions, they're not accurate. A lot of them aren't accurate. It is a wish list. It's not a must list. So don't be afraid to start applying early. And don't think that you can get the job offer like right away. It takes a while. It takes time to be good at interviewing. So make sure that you are applying and giving yourself as many opportunities as possible to practice on interviews. This is not an easy journey and I don't want it to make you feel discouraged, but I also don't want you to think this is a very easy journey or else everyone will be a developer. We are not gonna get compensated that well, right? In the past, I have shared a lot of different videos about how you can get hired from FreeCodeCamp and Udemy. Even though those videos are a little outdated, but all the advices are all still solid. So I would highly recommend to check out those videos. And remember, you can be anything if you set your mind to it. So don't let the world discourage you. Don't let the economy discourage you. If this is something that you want and makes you happy, you should do it. Until next time, I'll talk to you soon. Stay safe and adios.